This is a lottle. This is an ocean filled with trash and pollution. This is you. And in Lottle Knots, an upcoming indie game by Moon Lagoon, you're tasked with cleaning up the ocean so that lottles like these can go from floundering to flourishing. This is now my second time playing a demo of Lottle Knots, and you can watch my first impressions video linked in the description of the first time I played. One of my hopes in playing this updated version was that I would be able to see how the game would feel as we progressed beyond the tutorial, and if there is going to be any, sorry, I have to say it, depth to the progression of the gameplay. <laughs> the most recent build did include a new area that allowed for even more progression than the first time I experienced the game, and I'm happy to say that this latest gameplay left me wanting more in a very positive way, and there were even some thematic and narrative tidbits that the devs included that were very intriguing and made me feel like this would go beyond a simple, feels good to clean energy. But first, a quick summary of the gameplay. You've been sent to a polluted planet to clean its oceans and make the world habitable for its creatures again. While your supervisor doesn't necessarily encourage questions, a pretty big one I had while cleaning was how the mess got here in the first place. We quickly learned that the company Guppy is responsible for all of the mess, but the vast majority of the game isn't spent investigating that, at least for now. Rather, you're here to take direct action in cleaning up by using a vacuum gun to suck up all the floating bits of garbage, as well as clear out hazardous goop that has overrun the landscape. While it's not really discussed, I found myself wondering if this goop was simply waste left from Guppy, or if perhaps there was an organic component to it because it does continue to spread like an algae. So. If this was a natural organism or perhaps mutated or became invasive to this planet, uh, perhaps we'll find out more about where it really came from and maybe what Guppy was doing to produce something like this. There's a teaser interaction with your supervisor that got me thinking we'll be getting a little more in the way of answers in the full game. Moving around the world, picking up trash, and collecting the fruit all feels very smooth, and the stylized PS1-esque visuals provide a lot of beauty in their simplicity. The clarity of the visuals allows you to really feel the impact as you clean, and you can see things begin to improve. The inventory provides enough space that you can collect a decent amount of materials before needing to come back to your hub to recycle them, so you're not having to consistently go back and forth, and it's incredibly satisfying to get back to your base with a huge haul. I appreciate that when you start, there's a limited amount of O2 that you have as you clean, which does provide you a little bit of impetus to go back to your hub in the first place but it doesn't deplete so quickly that you're consistently being pulled out of the flow of cleaning. Recycling the item you collect provides materials that you can use to upgrade your gun, increase your O2 capacity, and add helpful stations along the ocean floor, making progression feel pretty smooth. I don't know how much more complex it'll get. As it stands now, it never felt too grindy or difficult to gain the material needed for upgrades, which generally match the overall gentle tone of the demo. Cleaning an area doesn't take too long. I think I took about 30 minutes for this particular area. Honestly, it felt perfect. Um, if each area was approximately that much time with perhaps a few levels near the end that are longer, maybe a few at the beginning that are short, uh, this could make for a very perfect before bedtime game where you just go in, clean an area before you go to sleep and feel very good about winding down the day. Now, the lottles. In addition to cleaning up the world around you, you'll notice creatures that have been impacted by the growths and trash. These poor lottles need your help, and while your supervisor doesn't necessarily want you spending time on that, how could you not? They're too dang cute! Cleaning them up also helps your cause. Infected lottles can continue to spread the goop to plants that they pass by, so there's a practical element to making sure and help them. But my favorite part of this game is, after helping them out, you can interact with the lottles. You can signal to them, feed them, ask them to follow you around, and it adds a playful, almost Tamagotchi-like feel to the game that provides a bit more warmth and impetus as to why you'd personally care about making this place better. If you feed the Lottles, they do grow, and I can't wait to see how the Lottles continue to integrate into the gameplay based on what you feed them, and how that may be brought into the game at a deeper level. But honestly, if it doesn't add much more to the gameplay depth, they're so cute and interacting is so fun, I would be simply just happy they left it at that. So, is Lotto Not worth checking out? If you're a player who loves games like A Little to the Left and Power Wash Simulator because of how they allow you that cathartic feeling of cleaning and organizing, this will be right up your alley. 
I also think if you enjoy games with more environmental narrative or a lighter touch narrative that still provides for good reflection, kind of like unpacking, this seems like it'll fit the bill. Finally, if you enjoy tending and befriending elements in games like taking care of creatures and farming sims or playing Tamagotchi, there's enough of that vibe that I think you'd enjoy this too. Now, if you're someone looking for incredibly complex systems, mechanics, intense action, weighty narratives, this may not fit what you're looking for. For me, this is one I will definitely be playing when it launches, and I look forward to seeing how the world continues to develop as you clean. If you'd like to see more gameplay from the first demo, check out the video linked here, and if you'd like to discover more games that are thoughtfully curated, be sure to follow me on YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok, and I'll see you all next time in the cafe.